This is the Scrap Metal Commodity Recycling Report by Ben Lee and Riley and Gold for Recycling, January 16th, 2017. Last week, many commodity prices rose, while economic reports were mostly positive. Looking at the left of this chart, steel production started well ahead of where it was last year. A nice start to the year. Oil fell $2 a barrel to $52. Oil hit an all-time high of $145 a barrel in 2008, just before the crash and it was a mere $1.17 in February 1946. Importantly, oil is double what it was just a year ago. Oil rigs, which consume major amounts of steel, fell for the first time to 522, but remain near a high for the year. Great for jobs and supporting stable steel prices. Iron ore fell a dollar to a metric ton to $82. While recently stable, it's actually more than double the $37 a metric ton of a year ago. Looking at the left of this chart, we see scrap ferrous prices are now double last year's price. Scrap flows into scrap yards are now increasing, which will actually help stabilize prices in the weeks to come. Hot dip galvanized steel remains steady at $850 a ton. Commercial Metal Corporation raised rebar prices $40 a ton, effective immediately. So there remains upward pressure on finished steel prices. Stainless Steel 304 held steady at 36 cents a pound, staying at the high for last year on slow increases in demand. Copper jumped 20 cents to $2.70 a pound, an almost 18-month high last week. The increase after the election is now showing signs of stabilization. A question remains, can this hold? Copper inventories have dropped in recent weeks which could actually help stabilize prices at these high levels. Aluminum rose four cents to 82 cents a pound, up about 22% in the last 12 months, a major gain. Note that aluminum inventories have actually been rising in recent weeks, which helps put downward pressure on prices in the months to come. The preliminary University of Michigan's U.S. Consumer Sentiment Index edged down to 98.1 in January from December's 13-year high a very positive indicator for the economy. U.S. initial jobless claims remain well under 300,000 for the week, a key measure of a positive economy, and now below 300,000 for 97 weeks in a row. This 50-year chart shows that the last time this happened was 1970, 47 years ago. A major opportunity for U.S. growth are more exports and less imports. We have an enormous amount of our population that is not working and could take jobs to create exports. Looking at this 10-year chart, China's trade balance is running at 20 to 50 billion positive dollars a month. That means 20 to 50 billion dollars a month of money coming into the country. Many say that their low cost of labor makes this easy. So now what we see is Germany has a very high union labor cost and very high universal medical costs. The government pays for everyone's medical costs through higher taxes. Their positive trade surplus is about 20 to 50 billion euros, which is about 14 to 19 billion positive dollars coming into the country every month. Now look at the US. In recent years, we have net outflows of 30 to 50 billion a month a massive outflow of money to the rest of the world as we now borrow about 20 trillion, yes, trillion dollars to run the economy. No, when oil was $145 a barrel in 2008, our trade balance was running at over $60 billion a month. We need to export more to build more wealth in the United States. Congratulations to CMC on purchasing seven of Omnisource's Southeast facilities. Last, we were very sad to learn that our very own North Carolinian Saul Gordon of L. Gordon Iron and Metal passed away this week. A very major loss for the industry. He'll be missed by many. With that, we help all have a safe and profitable week.